Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in for another Halo 5 Forge video. In my previous one, I showed you how you can make scriptless object movement using gravity slides, and today it's all about multi-level elevators, meaning you can call the elevator to any floor you're on. This tutorial is a bit trickier than most, but let's just get to it. First, just a brief demonstration of how the elevator works. Here is essentially how it works. Um, the first switch, if we take a look at it, script 1 and 2 are blank, but script 3 sends a message to delta, and script 4 power sets alpha on. So basically this means each floor has a power channel and a message channel. And the power channel will tell the elevator which floor it's on, the message channel tells the elevator which floor it needs to go to. So if we look at the second switch, the one in the middle, we can see that again script 1 and 2 are blank, but script 3 has on interaction message sent echo and script 4 has on interaction power set bravo to on. Uh, the third switch, the one on the far right, will be pretty much the same as the first two so if we look at it, script 3 sends a message to foxtrot and script 4 power sets charlie to be on. These are all the different inputs we have from the switches and if we actually take this and we look over at our floor block we can see six different scripts. These are the different ways that the elevator floor moves between the three floors. So script one is on power, alpha, and on message echo. It will move offset up 20 over a time period of three. And this says, the pow on power alpha part says that when it is on floor one and it receives a message to go to floor two, which is echo, it will move up 20 over a time period of three. Script 2 on our floor block says, on power of Bravo, and on message from Foxtrot, it will move offset by 20 over a period of 3, so from floor 2 to floor 3. Script 3 is on power alpha, and on message Foxtrot, so from floor 1 to floor 3, and this moves twice the distance, so it moves a distance of 40 over the time period of 6, because it's also twice the time period it needs to cover. Script 4 is back down from floor 3 to floor 2, so this time it'll move offset, it's on power charlie and on message echo, move offset down by 20 over a time period of 3. Script 5 is from floor 2 to floor 1, so on power bravo, on message delta, it will position rotation reset over a time period of 3. The reason that this is position rotation reset instead of just moving down vertically 20 is because if we set the um, floor 1 position of the elevator to be its default, we can hit position rotation reset at any time and have it go right back to where it should be no matter where it is in the map. Script 6 is similar to script 5. It's on power charlie, so from floor 3 to on message delta, back down to floor 1, position rotation reset over a time period of six. And this is essentially the basics of how the elevator works, but if you notice, there is actually no way to turn the other channels off. And so what we will do is we'll go over to these pigs over here. If we look at the first pig, these are gonna be my respawn timers. The first pig has three scripts on it. The first one is on message received from Foxtrot, it will despawn. So whenever this pig receives a message from Charlie, it will despawn. Uh, and on script 2, it spawns in and power sets alpha off. Script 3 is the same as script 2, except it power sets bravo off. Now if we look at this, it has a respawn timer of 1. So whenever it receives a message saying it needs to go to floor 3, it despawns, waits 1 second, and then respawns. And then when it respawns, it sends a message to turn off both alpha and bravo, so floor 1 and floor 2. And this is because if you turn off a power channel and then you use a multi statement at the exact same time, the multi statement will recognize that power channel is off and it will not work. If we go to the second pig, the one in the middle, it's basically the duplicated version of the first, except script one is on message received from echo, so from floor two it will despawn. And script two is it will set alpha off, 
script three is it will set Charlie off when it spawns back in. So you can guess the third pig is the same thing, but for floor one. So if we look at the third pig, script one says when it receives a message from Delta or floor one, it will despawn. It'll respawn, of course, on the same time of one. Script two says when it respawns, it'll power set Bravo off. And script three says when it respawns, it will power set Charlie off. And that's basically how the main section of the elevator works. There were a couple problems with that main design, mainly the fact that if you just hit the buttons enough times, you can kind of break the elevator and get it to send out of the map. So I made a couple changes to it, and if you look at this script on the bottom floor, it actually has script 1 and 2 doing things. So script 3 and 4, which we'll check, are the exact same as they are on the other floors. So on interaction, it'll message send to Delta, so floor 1 again, and on interaction, it'll power set alpha on, which are script 3 and 4. But if we go up to script 1, this says whenever it receives a message from Zulu, it will spawn in, which will come in handy much later when we actually get to despawning and spawning the switch. Script 2 says when this receives a message from Yankee, it will despawn. So essentially you can see that we're just going to have this switch despawning and respawning whenever the elevator is moving. Script 5 says on interaction, message sent Yankee. And if you remember, script 2 says that it will despawn when it receives a message from Yankee. So essentially, whenever the switch is pressed, it actually despawns and won't respawn until it receives a message from Zulu again. So if we, get, if we go up a floor, this second switch up on the outside here is the same as that one down below, except the only changes are the same as the changes on the second floor on our base elevator. So script 1 is still on message received from Zulu, it will spawn in. Script 2 is on message received from Yankee, it will despawn. Script 3, however, is where there's a difference, and this is just on interaction, it sends a message to Echo. Script 4 is just on interaction, it power sets Bravo on. And script 5 is the same as the first floor, where it will send that message to Yankee. Third floor, this switch, is again pretty much the same thing, scripts 1 and 2 and 5. But script 3 has it message sent to Foxtrot whenever it is pressed. And script 4 says on interaction, power set Charlie on. As you can see, these are just um, set up to despawn and respawn on certain script channels. Now, the issue is, it does they all do despawn right now, but they don't respawn. So if we come over here, back to the pigs again, there's actually a couple more respawn timers on top of them, which are the Master Chief dolls. If we take a look at this one on the far right, we can actually see that it has three scripts on it. This also has a timer of six seconds, to whenever it is despawned, it'll respawn after six seconds. Script one, when it spawns in, it will send a message to Zulu. Script two says, on power alpha and message Foxtrot. So this is similar to the elevator script, and this is when it is going from floor 1 to floor 3, it will despawn. Script 3 says, on power Charlie, message Delta, which is when it's going from floor 3 to floor 1, it will despawn. Both of these take 6 seconds, which is why it'll despawn whenever it is going up on from floor 1 to floor 3, or floor 3 to floor 1. It'll take that 6 seconds, because that's how long it takes the elevator to move, and then, when it reaches its destination, it, this Master Chief doll will spawn back in, and on script 1, because it says on spawn message sent Zulu, it will tell our elevator switches to spawn back in. The third Master Chief doll, this one on the far left, is very similar, and it just has a timer of 3. So the thing about this is, script 1 says the same thing, on spawn message sent Zulu, but scripts 2 through 5 are corresponding to the floor values. So script 2 says power alpha message echo, which is from floor 1 to floor 2, and that is when this will despawn. And then of course it will take 3 seconds to respawn, and when it respawns it will spawn back in all of our switches. Script 3 is the same thing, except it's from floor 2 on power bravo, and on message delta back down to floor 1. It will despawn again. Script 4 is on power bravo on message foxtrot, so from floor 2 to floor 3 it'll despawn once again. 
And of course, all these scripts are values of just one floor up or down, because that's what takes three seconds to move. Script 5 is from floor 3 down to floor 2. It'll despawn again, and of course, it'll take that three seconds to respawn. This last Master Chief doll is actually a trick we need to do for the doors. Because if you hit the button multiple times, it can still break the elevator and especially the doors. If I grab this door on the right, that's on the second floor. We can see it only has two scripts. The first script is on Message Power Multi, so on Power Bravo, and on Message Zulu. So whenever this receives a script, the power is set to floor 2, and it receives a message that all the switches have res are respawning and this will move offset 16 because that's you know about the width of my elevator over a time period of two so essentially all this means is when this elevator is on floor two and it receives a message saying that all the switches are spawned in which is again from those master chief dolls it'll move offset wherever you want it to and your door opening over a certain period of time Script 2 is just on message received from Yankee, which is that universal despawn switch script. So whenever a switch is pressed, it'll send a message to Yankee. All the doors will position, rotation, and reset over the same time period. And all it means is when it is on a certain floor and it receives a message that all its switches have respawned, it'll move out of the way. And then when all the switches despawn, it'll move back into the right place. The door on floor 3 does the same thing except the only difference is script 1 is set to on power charlie but otherwise it's the exact same thing and as you can imagine the doors to the left of these are the exact same thing except the negative axis so they move the opposite direction you can do these with um, one door or two doors or even three doors i don't really know there's a lot of things you can still add on to this elevator and if we look down here you can see that we can actually only grab the one on the left if we look at this door on the left for the bottom floor, we can see that it's the negative axis, and script 1 has it moving on power alpha. Now we come back to the Master Chief doll, the last one, because essentially if you were to just spam this button a lot, you would break the doors. So if we look at this, this Master Chief doll in the middle, it has four scripts, and this is set to respawn on a timer of two. It'll work the same way as the other Master Chief dolls do, it's just for if it's on the same floor. So because it's on a timer of two, it has to be equivalent to the time the doors take to open. Otherwise, the doors will glitch out and will bug in a slightly random place and won't close or open fully. So script one is the same as the other Master Chief dolls, in that it is on spawn, message send, Zulu. Script two is on power alpha and on message delta, it'll despawn. So when it is on floor 1 and is going to floor 1, it'll despawn, of course. And that is to counteract the fact that the Yankee channel will tell all the switches to despawn. This is what makes the switches respawn after you hit a switch and they all despawn. Script 3 says, on message power multi, so it is an on power bravo and on message echo. So it's from floor 2 to floor 2, it'll despawn. Script 4, as you can guess, is on power charlie on message foxtrot. So from floor 3 to floor 3, it'll despawn. And that's essentially how this last Master Chief doll works, and that is almost how the whole elevator works. What I do have set up is a few decoy switches. Essentially, I can hit this switch, and I have to grab this switch now. And if we wait for the elevator to move, you can actually see that there's another switch that spawns in. That's the real switch there. The one I'm currently holding, and I'll let go of, is if we look at it, it has only two scripts. So on script one, whenever it sees a message from Zulu, it will despawn. So this switch despawns when the real switches respawn. And on script two, it will spawn. So the other switches despawn, this will spawn in. And the issue with that is just simply if you have two switches in the same place, you like can't press either of them or you press the wrong one. I'm not quite sure, but you basically can have two switches in the exact same place. So I just decided to have a switch that spawns in the opposite. And all of the fake switches, these are simply placed everywhere we have one of our elevator switches. And the switches inside the elevator are simply corresponding to the floor number that is above them. So like this one over here on the left has the number one above it, 
it's simply the same switch as is on the first floor. Except the issue is, again, you need the fake switches to despawn. Otherwise, you're gonna press the wrong one. So over here, right in front of my spawn point, I actually have a switch set up, and it only has the one script on it, which is on interaction message send Zulu. And this is just so that the fake switches despawn and the elevator is ready to be used. But you could easily transfer this into a on match starter, on round starter, on timer script and it'll achieve the exact same purpose. And you are free to add on however much you want. You could add in lights displaying what floor it's on, as long as you kind of understand the basis of the power channel representing the floor and the message representing the floor command. That concludes this tutorial, guys. A special thanks to my buddy Expired Eggnog who made this possible. He's interested in starting a scripting support team, so if you're a skilled scripter and want to help somebody in the community who might need it, add him on Xbox Live. Also, check out the link below for more information on that. If you enjoyed this tutorial, drop a like and subscribe for more Halo 5 content. And as always, thanks for watching.